Hey guys, I'm Renee. I'm Marcia. And I'm Demetrius. And we are Sip and Unwind, a true crime podcast. Hey guys. Hey, Sip. Hey. Hey, Sippers. Back Woo-hoo. for another now. mother freaking episode. Okay. I got that Demetrius talk. Mother All right. freaking. <laughs> okay. I love that. I usually want to cuss, but I'm trying to, you know, be a little more classier. I guess. Okay. <laughs> yes. okay, classy. But I'm saying, you know, since we're explicit, like, you know, we're already marked explicit content. I mean, you know, I can't. I like, know. Well, you know, because it's like, you know, it moments where that, that one case gets you. you like, that you know? mother boop. You know? I know, right? Like that bitch. <laughs> right. Let's see how I'll take that. <laughs> I will say that on this new journey with our whole show or whatever, we don't cuss as much. I think all three of us yeah, have no, like, cut I try down not the to. amount of. Yeah. I'm not even too. sure why. I don't know either, but the same here. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think I might start cussing more. I just don't. I'll be like, well, I don't want to offend them because they're not cussing. So I don't want to be like the. Wait a minute, so you know, either you, the either you're going to be classy or you're going to be ratchet. Which one is it? You just said you're going to be classy a, a second ago. I know, right? <laughs> but then oh. you just said it was okay to cuss. So then I'm like, okay, well, I guess we can cuss. Permission them, granted. <laughs> Well, hey, motherfucking zippers, how y'all oh, doing? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Wait a minute, sis. <laughs> we, we sound like, we sound like our we parents. And, look, we sound like our parents just left out the house. And you know how exactly. you did that when you was little? And then, ladies, well, I know ladies. me and my sister used to be like, shit, motherfucker, ass. <laughs> ladies. Now that's funny. We will not cuss upon this freaking live. <laughs> We just mustn't. Okay, mom. All right. And did you have any gray poop on? I don't know people are like, what in the hell is going on? I'm sorry, (laughs) Sipper. How much have they had to drink? (laughs) I know already. Goodness. Well, speaking of drinks, do you guys have your drinks poured? I have mine poured. You got yours poured, Demetrius? How about you? Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. And Sippers out there, if you, I'm, I don't want to have to keep saying this every time, but I hope you already have your, your drink you already gotta ready you gotta before you hit that them. play. You know, so next time, if you don't have it done this time, next time, before you hit that play button, have mm-hmm. your drink ready. Because, I mean, you, the stuff we talk about, you're going to need a drink or something for that, you know, because it's crazy. Yes. And this drinking is because, you know, it's just that's what people do. Like, right. I think that's yeah. what I do. Like or drink. or if fun. you have your gray poop on, just have your tea and your water. <laughs> Demetrius is fancy. She puts a whole bunch of fruits in her alcohol. I do. <laughs> she is fancy. You know, I, I do the um vodka straight. Oh. On the rocks. On the rocks. You know, Demetrius, <laughs> has, Demetrius has strawberries and all the other kind of fancy stuff. I know. The fruity <laughs> ones are the best. <laughs> they are. They are actually really good. They look really pretty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well. So today's spotlight of evil will be on Latanya Bellamy, Shaquan Bellamy, and Darmelia Lawrence. But mm. first, before we um, talk about this, let's talk about what we are drinking on right now. Since we were just getting on y'all's asses about having your drinks, I'm drinking a ri- a raspberry lemon drop. So Ooh, now, now you talk about fruity, yeah. you know? Yeah, I know, right? And I was talking about it before, um, I think it was last episode, two episodes ago or whatever I was saying about the lemon drop that I was um, perfecting. So I finally kind of got that mixture together where I can make it at home and it tastes good. So I bought some raspberries because one of my favorite drinks is um, the raspberry lemon drop at Cheesecake Factory. Not sure if you guys Mm. have had it before, but if you haven't, go get it. Raspberry um, lemon drop. So I had I bought some raspberries and I just you know smushed them, <laughs> got some juice out of it and kind of mixed it in with my um, lemon drop. And okay. so now I have my raspberry lemon drop. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So um, yeah. So you know I like my vodka and that's the alcohol of choice that I put in my lemon drops and they actually do me good. So yeah. So um, what are you guys drinking, Martia? So I have a wine that I picked up from our winery trip a few weeks back and it's called Luce del Sol. And it's That's a that lemon. lemon one, right? It, it, yes. Okay. It's oh, funny that we're both drinking God. lemon drinks tonight. 
Mm-mm. That was funny because and, they were saying how that one was so good, and I just did oh not man, like it. It was. Oh my goodness! And you know, the most important part for me is what, ladies? The alcohol content. Yes, <laughs> and this is the highest percentage I've ever had in a wine. I believe. What was that was one? Twenty percent. What? Okay, because I, I thought, thought it was twenty two. It, it says 20 on the label. Okay, 20 on the label. Okay. And I think the highest I've ever had in a wine was 18%. So yeah, Ooh. this one was pretty good. It was it was a little pricey for my pockets though, mm-hmm. but I think it was worth it. So and especially it was yeah. little too. It was the yeah, bottle was it, cute it was, though. The bottle yeah. was cute. But it was like half the size of a regular mm-hmm. bottle though. So yeah. See, I don't I know if I think save it that, for a yeah. special occasion, but uh I couldn't wait. So I'm drinking yeah. that tonight. So I think yes. everybody who was drinking it was saying they liked it, but I I did. I did. It I, was did not, good. I think it's because when I mixed it with whatever that thing that she had, she gave what was it, ginger beer or something? Oh, the ginger. Oh, yeah. I think oh, that yeah. might have been what I didn't like, and it just threw the whole drink okay. off. Okay, you needed it yeah. by itself. Yeah. 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 So I was, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. So I I think she messed it up for me. But everybody else okay. seemed to like it. What are you drinking, Demetrius? Ooh, <laughs> I'm oh. drinking a New York sour. <laughs> what the hell? A New York sour? Can you mm-hmm. tell us more about that, sis? It has a little bit of Tennessee whiskey in it. So, oh. yeah, Ooh, it has it, it has the light dark, as Renee call it, the light. <laughs> the light. Dark. The light skin dark. The light. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> huh. You throwing it's, it back tonight, sis. Yes, <laughs> it's really good. Okay. It's sweet it with maple. You said New York sour. New York sour. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I probably got to write that one down. Yes, because you have to have red wine. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's and a you wine drink. Have... Mm-hmm. Oh, with whiskey. Wine and whiskey. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that probably is going to get you right. Oh. <laughs> hey, hubby. It's <laughs> <laughs> doing down Okay. Who oh. we? So yeah. Okay. Well, um, good luck to that with you on that one, Demetrius. <laughs> Cause the wine and whiskey together. It's really yeah. good. I gotta mix it. Yeah. I'll bring it and mix it. It's I would really wanna, I wanna try that's one of my though. that's one of my other faves. I've never had a drink that had wine and like a liquor. Yes, like and white <laughs> Russian. I love white Russian. Oh, I gotta get y'all in it. Oh I've heard of it, but I haven't mm. had one of those either. It's really good too. I need to start experimenting more, getting out of my comfort zone when I go to bars. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I just, I just, I just don't order the stuff that I don't really know too much about. Cause I don't want to sound stupid. You know, I don't know. Right. Does, you know, how people be mm-hmm. like, you hear like, what's that? Um, the drink with the, the, the cab, the, it's something with a cab thing. Call a cab. I think that's the name. Yeah, of it. That's good. And I'm just like, I don't want to go up there. Cause that sounds like it's not right. Like, I don't know. It just sounds like, <laughs> or was like, girl, was you listening to that on TikTok or something? Or did you hear that name from <laughs> something? I just remember that being um, at Wet Willie's. They have a call it uh, the cab. I think a call a cab. Mm-hmm. So I know it's like a mixed a drink or something. It's something with a cab in it. And I was just like, uh. <laughs> and I didn't know what like a white Russian. I don't know. And I just don't like the way that sound. Oh, it's good. Oh my god. You know, it, it has Russian. milk in it. It's it's. Got does it remind milk. you of like black or something? Like what is that? Oh my god! <laughs> what you say? What? <laughs> what <are> you say? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Just white Russian just sound. I don't think I don't like it either, but. <laughs> Because you were just like, like that has just bothered you that it's called white I Russian. I don't like, like that name. Like, I do. It just sounds like, ew, that's an old white Russian. Ew, that's <laughs> but it's, it's, it's made with milk, I think. Mm. Renee is weird, man. Mm. <laughs> so in today's episode, let's go back to spring break 2010, where 19-year-old college student Latanya Bellamy is back home in Jersey City. So she was a girl with high hopes for the future. She wanted to be a social worker and also wanted to help troubled youths. She was very close to her cousin, Shaquan Bellamy. On the night of April 3rd, Latanya and her cousin went out partying. Her cousin, Laquan, went out partying. This partying included doing ecstasy and alcohol. While on this high from partying and hanging with friends, including 19-year-old Darmelia Lawrence, Latanya wanted to do something, quote unquote, daring or something that she hasn't done before. Her cousin Shaquan was a, quote unquote, bad boy. So he had all the guns. He had all the drugs. He did all the crimes, you know, like one of those type of people. And he was just a total mess. So with her linking up with him and wanting 
to do, you know, something she's never done before, go out and do something dairy was a daring was a recipe um, for a disaster, actually. That night, Latanya wanted to shoot a gun. She said she'd never shot a gun before. I don't know if I believe that, but she said she's never shot a gun before. On that same night in New Brunswick, New Jersey, 25-year-old Nia Hack and 27-year-old Michael Muchoki were both out celebrating their engagement party at Delta's, a soul food restaurant in New Jersey. Then they went to a larger gathering at Pearl, a club and a lounge. The two planned on being married April 2011. Mike attended the New Jersey Institute of Technology and worked as a software engineer in Jersey City. Nia graduated from college from the College of New Jersey. She worked as an associate producer for an affiliate of Nickelodeon in New York. Mike and Nia met through Greek life at their colleges. Mike was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and Nia was a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. After the party was over at Pearl, they were going to go out to a diner for a you know, late night bite, but then they decided just to go back home to Mike's apartment in Jersey City. When they pulled up to their home around three o'clock in the morning on the morning of April 4th, 2010, which was Easter Sunday, during the same time, Latanya and her cousin Shaquan and her friend Darmelia were roaming the streets looking for some trouble to get into. The three bandits saw the engaged couple pull up in their car. That's when they decided to rob the couple, Nia and Mike. A witness said that they saw three people approach the car and heard one of them yell, get out the car, get out the car. And that's when they called 911. That's when the neighbor, the witness, called 911. First, Shaquan approached them and demanded that they get on the ground face down. Then he let his cousin, Latanya, know that this was where she can get her taste of shooting a gun. Shaquan first shot Mike in the head with a shotgun, leaving Nia there to witness the horror. Latanya stepped up with her cousin and friend egging her on and she shot Nia in the head with a pistol, killing both of them. After they were deceased, they then robbed Nia and Mike of all the items that they had on them, like a cell phone, money, credit cards, and they also took Nia's engagement ring off her finger. Nia's car had anti had an anti-theft device on the steering wheel, preventing them from taking the car, so then they fled the scene after this. Days later, Shaquan was arrested for an unrelated crime, And the police later had his shotgun, shells, and a jacket with blood all in their possession. Once they tested the blood, it showed that Mike's DNA was found on the inside barrel of the shotgun that Shaquan had. Latanya's fingerprints and DNA were found at the scene as well. Later, Shaquan was charged with three additional murders outside of this double murder that they just committed. The three three suspects were tried separately. The friend, Darmelia, who was there, but she didn't pull the trigger, she pled guilty to armed robbery and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Shaquan Bellamy was convicted of a double homicide and sentenced to life in prison. And Latanya Bellamy was convicted of two counts of felony murder and carjacking, and she was sentenced to life plus 30 years and had a non-parole period of 93 years. So she couldn't even be up for parole until she serves at least 93 years of her sentence. Currently, Latanya is incarcerated in the Edna Mahan Correctional Facility for Women. Her earliest parole eligibility date is set for January 13th, 2104. Shaquan Bellamy is currently in the New Jersey State Penitentiary. His earliest parole eligibility date is set for September 23rd, 2154. Darmelia Lawrence is currently incarcerated at the same place that Latanya is um, at, and her earliest parole eligibility and max release date is April 8th, 2027. So she'll be the one, probably, well, she'll be the only one of the three getting out of prison before she passes away, you know, because I don't think, well, I know the other two won't be getting out of prison since their dates are so far in the future. So there is a love, Mike. Nia Foundation that they have created in honor of the two um, engaged couples that were murdered. And they do great things for the community. Yearly, they have an award. They award a scholarship for money, you know, to students of New Jersey Institute of Technology and the College of New Jersey. 
Both of these schools are the schools that Mike and Nia attended. So there's not much more to the story than this, but mm. I did want to speak about it just because oh, it kind of, yeah. yeah, it kind of yeah. hit me a little, you know, two engaged couples, 25 and 27 years old, coming back from their engagement yeah. party. And then they just decided to rob them and just kill them right there on the street. You That's know, terrible. Yeah. It is. Oh my goodness. It's like people are walking around. We always say people are heartless when we describe people that are mm-hmm. evil or mean. But sometimes I feel like you, you can't have a soul. Like, how do you right. just do something so... Oh, that's just sick. Right. And you just did all this just because you wanted to shoot a gun and you just wanted to see what it was right. like. I mean, like, Latanya, the one that shot the um, Nia was a college student, you know, a college student on spring break and wanted to be a social worker and also wanted to help troubled youths. Like, how do the two mix? Like, how do you go from that to, you know, just that extreme? Yeah. yeah. And it's like the rest of your life, like you're in jail for the rest of your life. Like you're giving up the rest of your life just because you want to shoot a gun. And it's the people who you don't even know. Like, right. it's not even like you had an argument wow. and you got something happened like that. It's just somebody off the street that you don't even know. And now you're spending the rest of your life in prison because of that. And the gun range, that's what that's for. Like, yeah, you go to the gun range. I mean, that's just, that's crazy. Right. So, yeah. So, um, that is so heartbreaking. Like they, they did is. nothing to them. I can see if they were like, I, I running your own business. Yeah, just why? Wow. Yeah. And also shows how unpredictable life is. You know, people mm-hmm. have plans for tomorrow and it's that's it's like tomorrow doesn't always come. Yeah. Sorry, Sippers, that this isn't a longer true crime story, but this is one that I did want to speak about and it was kind of quick, but um yeah, Thank but goodness it, that they it did, still needed to be heard. Even though yeah. it doesn't really help, it doesn't bring them back, you know, but you but know. at least they're not still on the streets. Yeah. That's right. Justice was served. Right, right. All right. Well, let's keep them in prison forever. Well, at least the two of them will be in prison forever. And Please. The other, the third that was just there, but still could have, you know, done something, stopped some, you know, something exactly is going to be out of prison soon. So we'll be closing the books on this case. And next we're going to segue into spill the wine. So spill the wine is one of our segments where, you know, and if you're a sipper, you know, email us at sipping and wine at gmail.com or send us a DM. And, you know, if you just want any kind of relationship advice, or it doesn't even really have to be relationship advice. It can be just any advice, life advice, you know, Mm -hmm. just get our opinions on something that you kind of are struggling with or you need, you know, maybe another person's insight on, you know, send us a, uh, send us an email. We love to get them. So who has our spill the wine this week? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Demetrius. I have it. Oh my God. I went, okay, let me tell you. So it's this app that you can upload to like randomly select numbers. So that's what I did. And I selected this one. Oh, huh? Yeah. Just like randomly. So I could find oh. one that would be odd for us to talk okay. about. Okay. Like that. All right, ladies, here we here we go. Okay. Are you ready? This is from one of our female sippers, and it says, "Hello, ladies. I recently found out my boyfriend has been sexually harassing a female coworker what? at at work through an unnamed source. Should I approach mm-hmm. him about it or break up without telling him why? We are currently okay. living together." And my name is on the lease with him. Please advise. Oh, my goodness. And she says, I do not approve of his behavior at all. And I do feel uncomfortable being near him. <clears throat> Does she know what extent the sexual? I don't know. It just she says it sexually is. harassing okay. a female. I mean, I don't I don't know if she want to get personal. On yeah. Here. So I'm trying to right. see like what. It actually was. Yeah. I mean, well, she I couldn't know. just, she can't just leave. I mean, she, she got a whole place with them with her I name. Know. I mean, so you can't. Her name is on the lease yeah. and they live together. She can still leave, though. She yeah. can still leave. Yeah. But I'm saying you just can't. It's not really like, it's not as easy as he crazy or he, you know, I'm not going to talk to him no more. So when he calls me, I'm not going to answer. 
Mm. Like you're going to have to probably have some sort of a conversation. I mean, you kind of really don't though, actually. I mean, if you, like I say, if you plan and plot correctly, (laughs) take a day off of work, but you already have your stuff together. And then when he's gone to work, you get those movers in as soon as he comes, as soon as he leaves for work. You know, getting your name off of a lease, it does take a little, I don't know. I don't know the new. The can you do that though? It, without the other get person? your name off the lease. You can know, you do you, that without the other person knowing? I, I don't know. Huh. I don't know. I, I wish, I mean, I don't know what state she's in or mm-hmm. where she's from, you know, so that's, you know, state laws, you got to obey those, you know, so I don't know how it goes as far as releasing. What do you think, Martina? I feel like she should talk to him first because um, mm-hmm. she's listening to someone tell her that her man is sexually harassing a female at work. Mm-hmm. So I'm not leaving my man without trying to at least first ask him about the situation mm-hmm. and at least see what he has to say. Because I think with something like this, I don't know. I mean, this might, I'm not sure how the sippers will feel about me saying this, but I feel like, None of my husband's co-workers can come tell me that he's harassing someone at work. I'm not going to believe it. But at mm-hmm. the same time, I mean, you don't always know the person that you're partnered up with. But we definitely have to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. That's just me. I like I like to start with talking about it first. And yeah. then I just feel like, I don't know, this is a tough one because it is. It is. You're, you're listening to someone tell you what he did at work. But we all know how office mess mm-hmm. can get started. Yep. Sometimes people make up things that, that don't exist, you know, and maybe he messed around with somebody at work, but then this person got mad and decided to smear his name. We don't know what the situation is. So I'm not walking out that fast off some, somebody told me something. Yeah. Gotcha. So that makes I think, sense. Yeah. So in, in my opinion, I think there should be a conversation that's had first and, you know, then she needs to go from there. But for me, though, I'm not leaving my man because I'm just going to be like, he ain't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, you know, but that's just based off of the character that I see every right. day. So, yeah. yeah, I definitely think she needs to I'm gonna be like, at least Cosby approach on this him. One. I'm sticking by my man. We're going to have to go to court <laughs> over this. Before I... <laughs> that's my man. Before yeah, I walk... I'm sticking that's by my him. Man. <laughs> We're going to have to go to court over this before I walk mm-hmm. away. <laughs> this is your man. Yes. Look at the screen. That's mine. And, and, I, and, and I'm going to stick and beside him. And that's what you're going to settle for. I'm going to stick beside him. Yeah. I, you know, she says she feels uncomfortable being around him and she don't approve of that behavior. There might be but something else that she knows that makes about me him, think, though. Yep, exactly. That's what that's I was going to say. Is. That makes me think she knows something else about his behavior mm-hmm. or maybe about his past. That okay. makes her. Why are you uncomfortable all of a sudden? Right. Like, why would you be so quick to believe that? And that's your man. Like, I think all three of us could just agree to that part right there. Yeah. If yeah. somebody came and told you about your man harassing somebody at work, you know, you know who your man is. Does mm-hmm. he flirt with other women? Does he oh, play around like that? Because yeah. a lot of times, well, I ain't gonna say a lot of times. I don't know what the statistics are, but some men who are who sexually harass women, they have that flirtatious nature mm-hmm. that people see. You mm-hmm. know, so you know that about your man. So anyway, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't yeah. just walk away so easily. I wouldn't unless it's something that she already knows about him, and then she's kind of just kind of reaffirming what she already knows. You know, true, true. Because I mean, if you're thinking about just walking away and not even talking to him, yeah, don't. I wouldn't do that. Him. Yeah, and unless then, you know and, your man, and you know your man, and also is, it could be you know, details she didn't expose to us. You know about what that mm-hmm. unknown source. Uh, told her but yeah. you know i would ask though i would talk i would talk about it i wouldn't even think about you know when my first thought wouldn't be oh i'm about to leave him okay you know mm-hmm. but that's only because of the person that i'm with you know like i would i wouldn't be like oh my gosh because i know he's out there doing all this other stuff but i'd be like what happened you know because it could be something that was innocent that they exactly. probably didn't realize that you know it was acceptable before True. now is not just like you know like me at work when i used to go into the office like Previously, I had male coworkers come up and give me hugs and would like lay their head on my chest a little bit. And I guess oh. that's inappropriate. Okay. Yeah, I'm sitting up here thinking, wait a minute, sis. 
You okay? So Since you used to work at the that? same place I did. So yeah. do you remember? Do you remember um, the short um, facilities guy? Yes. So I'm taller, hair. huh? He had curly hair. No. Oh, then I don't remember him. I'm trying to think if there's another person. Oh, you well, had multiple. We had a few. Well, no, I'm saying we oh, had a few facilities. The guy that I'm thinking person. about, he used to like you, so. Ooh, you can cut know. this out if you want to, but oh, no. I don't know oh, okay, he no like you. So um if, if, if he land his head on your chest, I mean that's just not normal behavior. <laughs> 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 like I would I was, I, was he his was name Rob or something. Huh? Was his name Rob or Rod or something like that? Uh uh-uh. uh. First I'm talking, yeah, about talking about his name oh, Howard. His name is I don't know. I don't remember him. But um like I'm taller. Mm-hmm. And I had heels. I used to wear heels back in the day when I used to could wear heels and stuff. And he was a shorter man. So he'd come give me a hug, you know, and put his head, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was funny because, I mean, it wasn't no attraction. It wasn't like no nothing was happening. I just was like. Where's me too when you need them to go ahead and define this shit as sexual harassment? <laughs> I was just like, Ooh. So I remember I was telling my boyfriend about it. I was just like, yeah, I even, you know, did that. And he was just like, what? Exactly. <laughs> We've been you know, so used to sexual harassment. We don't even know it when we see it. Yeah, because I remember, like, even like sometimes. Uh uh-uh, uh, not when you see cut. it when it's happening. Look, not low, <laughs> right. low cut exactly. shirts. Look, I used to wear low, not low cut shirts, but shirts where, I mean, like a v neck shirt could be, you know, oh, okay. on me. And then I remember, like, I can't remember who it was, but they used to come up to my desk just to look down my shirt. So, so wait, are we condoning for wow. her to stay with him and work it out? No. Or I'm just saying how things... You already know what my opinion is. Things were acceptable. Went left. Okay. <laughs> things were kind of acceptable back then. I only, I don't know. They might not be in the, been acceptable. But I mean, I didn't care. I wasn't one of those where it's just like, oh my God. You know, like, uh-uh. Well, at that same job, I did report someone for sexual harassment, so... <laughs> did I think you? you and I... Yeah, I think you and I have different definitions of that. Or well, I mean, that might have been, okay. but I mean, for me, but I just didn't, wouldn't think that I'd be reporting it, because I mean, I don't know. I'd just be like, because eh. I mean, ain't nothing happening. Like, I ain't, you know, mm. but... <laughs> well, young lady. I guess that was wrong then. Yeah, let's... <laughs> You think, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh Lord, mm, just a just a little bit, Renee. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm starting to get visuals of that. That's be like appropriate. No way. But you know, like, <laughs> it's like every episode I find out something it's new like something. about y'all. <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, we need to go back to therapy. Okay, but my advice to her would be the same as both of you. you no, know, talk it out first. Mm-hmm. See to the extent of the sexual harassing that he's doing to the other coworker, because somebody there, an unnamed source, is telling. So yeah, like who is that what, person? So mm-hmm. how much of it does she know to the extent? Is this person going to her? Confiding in her? That's what he's doing. So that might make another whole situation within itself. Yeah, but but yeah, to ask him. Don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Ask him, and, and if he answers you, you know how your man will respond if he tell him the truth or lie. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would say talk it out. Yeah. We're we're all in agreement there. Talk yeah, because honey, first. that lease might be hard to break. You might have to owe a thousand dollars to get mm-hmm. out of the contract. <laughs> you know, uh, uh-uh, uh, honey. But sis, out, if he did sexually harass somebody, I can't even say the word. I'm laughing. <laughs> but if he did sexually harass somebody, who cares about a lease and breaking it? Oh, okay, that's, right. that's true too. <laughs> but I don't know. Don't, don't be. There. Just put his ass out. Don't chunk. Don't chunk out money for yourself. Right. Tell him he got to go. Man. That kind of sucks, though. That kind of, yeah. Especially, yeah, in her situation. So I wish you luck. Thank you for contacting too. us. Yeah. Just ask, though. We, our advice, ask. Yeah. Ask. Yeah. Talk, talk it out. And, yeah, and if you really, you know, if you believe that he wouldn't do something like that, I wouldn't say just up and leave, you know, because people can be lying. You never yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for that. Um, spill yes. the wine. I appreciate that. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so again, if you guys want to talk to us, you know, or be on a spill the wine segment and want our advice or anything, it's sip in unwind at gmail.com. 
or you can hit us up on Twitter or Instagram, Facebook, all under Sip and Unwind. Okay, Sippers, so now we're going to segue into our missing person segment. Um, Martia has our missing person that we're going to profile for this week. Okay, so this missing person segment is going to be a little different from some of the others I've done. For one, I have two people that are missing. And also for two, there's a whole background to the story about what happened that led to these people. Um, how do you say that led to these people becoming disappearing? Exactly. Or, that's it. Okay. There's a whole story that led to these people disappearing. So I want to tell you the backstory and that's going to be a, a little bit more than what I give you with the other cases that I've covered. Is that okay, ladies? Can I give you the backstory? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I'm ready. All right. So this this disappearance, this missing persons case, I'm going to basically read an article from the Resource Center for Cold Case Missing Children's Cases. That's the name of the website. And this is a case that I actually saw and um, that I actually saw when I was looking at some of the other cases that I've covered. And I was always kind of debating on whether I wanted to to do this one or not, because there's so many different pieces to it. But I said, you know what? Any type of attention for any of these cases is a big deal. So I said, let me go ahead and do it. So the details of this disappearance is um, it's two children. Michael and Monica Bennett were last seen in Brunswick, Georgia on June 21st, 1989. They were last reportedly seen at Heritage Apartments on the 5700 block of Altima Avenue. At the time of their disappearance, Monica and Michael's mother, Deborah George, was separated from her husband, Robert George. Monica and Michael were staying with other relatives at the time of their disappearance in 1989. And part of the reason for that was because of whatever dispute was going on between Deborah and her husband or her estranged husband, Robert. Monica was staying with her biological father and Michael was staying with Robert's first wife and his half siblings on his father's side. Michael was born when Robert was still married to his first wife, but he did not take his father's last name. His first wife treated Michael very well and accepted him into the family. Robert later divorced his first wife and then he went on to marry Deborah before they had four other daughters. Monica was said to be extremely close with her older sister. Her older sister's name is Sheila Wigfall. Sheila was no longer living at home, but she still attended the same high school classes at a school called Glen Academy. And this is also where Michael went to school. So those three siblings all went to the same high school. Sheila was actually married and pregnant with her first child, and she was living with her in-laws. But she and Monica, they talked every single day at school. So earlier in 1989, Monica went to Sheila while they were at school and told her that her stepfather, Robert, had been sexually abusing her. She also expressed to her sister her fear of going back home. So Sheila went to her school guidance counselor and then the guidance counselor took them to the police and she basically shared some of the things that was going on in the household. When Deborah, the mother, found out about the allegations, she did not believe her daughter. She said her daughter was making up the stories and she was basically blaming her daughter for trying to leave the house. And I guess her she felt like her daughter was trying to make up stories so that she wouldn't have to live at home anymore. So Sheila ended up telling authorities after these kids went missing that the last time she saw her sister was near the end of the school day, less than three hours before they were reported missing. Robert, the stepfather, has previously sexually abused other children. And years earlier, Deborah had walked in on Robert sexually abusing her 13-year-old sister. So it's a whole lot of mess with this oh situation my here. God. Yeah. Yep. So however long Robert and Deborah were together, his wife had a younger sister that he was caught molesting. And then One of Monica's sisters even said that she caught Robert trying to sneak into her bedroom that night. So here it is. One of Deborah's sisters was molested by him. One of her other daughters was saying that he was trying to come into her room. But for whatever reason, she did not believe that he tried to abuse Monica or that he did abuse Monica. 
And Michael was also super close to Robert at the time. And he didn't believe that the stepfather tried to abuse Monica either. So in the late spring of 89, Michael ended up walking in on Robert sexually molesting Monica. He told his mother about what happened and she separated from Robert as a result. So I guess it took all of that for her to believe wow. that this man was on her daughter. So it was at this time that her son, Michael, went to go live with his uh, stepfather's first wife. And also when Monica went to go live with her biological father. So not much is known about those living situations. It was just that, you know, but they do know all the kids were separated. So it should also be noted that Monica and Michael went missing just a few weeks after Deborah and Robert separated. Robert had decided after the separation that he was going to move to Alabama, which is his original home state, even though he had just gotten an apartment in Brunswick. There are also reports that state that Robert and Monica were helping Robert pack up his apartment in in preparation for his move to Alabama on the actual day that they disappeared. So those reports state that Michael and Monica went missing after Robert dropped them off back at their mother's house. But Deborah said that she did not see her children at all on the day that they went missing. So there are also some other reports that said Robert's apartment was almost completely empty the day they disappeared. So what were they over there allegedly helping him pack up and move? And basically there was just some empty boxes and maybe some bedding, but nothing that they would have been helping him pack up so he can take with him. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's a crazy case. Also during the afternoon of the kid's disappearance, Robert went to his ex-wife's home to get Michael, but Michael didn't want to go. And he was crying when he did get in the car to leave. And then when he picked up Monica, you know, her father did say that the stepfather came over there to get her. So there's people that put these kids together with this man. They also have an aunt that lived in the same apartment complex Mm -hmm. just across the courtyard from Robert's apartment. And the two teenagers made a surprise visit to their aunt that evening. Right before it got dark, they ate at her apartment and then approximately 830 p.m., she walked the kids outside and she saw Robert when she walked those kids out. So the aunt said that Robert spoke with her and he asked her to contact Deborah just to make sure that he was able to drop the kids off. And then she said after they spoke, him and the kids walked away. And that was oh, the last this time. Is so the aunt, sad. Yep. And that was the last time the aunt saw them. And then according to Monica and Michael's four younger sisters, Later that evening, Robert came and picked them up from their mother's home, but he was said to have driven around the apartment complex while kind of just looking around. And he didn't call out anyone's names. He didn't speak to anyone and just acting real strange. One of the young girls remembered that some bedding, and uh, some comforter sets or whatever was missing and that some garbage bags were packed up near the door, almost like Robert may have been trying to get rid of some personal belongings that belonged to the two teenagers. They didn't know what was in the bag. So Robert gave two inconsistent statements regarding the kids' disappearance when he was talking to authorities. At one point, he said they ran out of his apartment while they were there trying to pack up and that they never came back. And then he also said he dropped them off at their mother's apartment and that he left and never saw them again. It should also be noted that the police report regarding their disappearances stated that Robert called Deborah to tell her that the children disappeared. But this is odd since Robert was on the phone asking to go home to Deborah and this was witnessed by the kid's aunt. So, like I said before, the aunt also said that Monica and Michael were both there around that 830 time frame when she saw them in the neighborhood. So within a few days of the Bennett children going missing, Robert's car disappeared as well. His younger kids said they were never able to find out what happened to that car. A few weeks later, Robert and Deborah, they ended up getting back together and they took their remaining children and they all moved to Alabama. So he got rid of the car and they relocated and she took him back. She Mm -hmm. took him back. Exactly. So her kids, her kids are missing. And I hope y'all are following the story because it's kind of yes. it confusing, I know. Mm-hmm. But the kids went missing is the bottom line. The the stepfather slash father was mm-hmm. one of the people, the last people seen with the kids. She takes this fool back 
and they moved Man. away to another state. And that, like I said, the car never came back up again. So, you know, that probably had all kind of whatever mm-hmm. kind of evidence. Right. So anyway, for 15 years, Michael and Monica were classified as endangered runaways with the police. And police didn't even really start investigating the case until the early 2000s. So, like I stated, this happened in 1989. But because of all these inconsistent stories from the family members as to, you know, the last known whereabouts, they classified these poor children as runaways. So in 2004, their cases were classified as endangered missing. And of course, the police and family members believe there was foul play involved Mm -hmm. and there were other factors that caused their disappearance. Most family members believe Robert was involved in their case. Deborah's mother described that the husband as manipulative, controlling, and a violent person who would occasionally beat on his wife. The younger children also remember violent occurrences while they were growing up in the home. And after the family did relocate to Alabama, they say that Deborah was known to occasionally leave Robert, but she would always end up going back. So, oh my gosh. But, but, look, but get this, when she left him, she would leave those younger ki- children in, in his care whenever she oh, left. Oh, that is so horrible. Like, what in the yeah. hell do you have to, like, oh my gosh, to tell these people not to, you know, like, it just seems common sense. Like, you, I don't know, I just. And I mean, I, I know that those it. younger kids were his kids that they had together, but still, still I, I would uh-uh. never. No way in hell. Yeah. So, I mean, over the years of investigating, investigators have also um, kind of concluded that perhaps Robert's brother was mm-hmm. also possibly involved in the disappearance, or he might have more information as to what happened to the two teenagers because he was known to live with the family off and on for many years. And Sheila also states that he sexually abused her when she was young. Oh so, my goodness. Yeah. Oh so my goodness. Just predators just, all around you. Right. But then I guess with some of the family members keeping these secrets, because see all this stuff didn't come out like right when the kids went missing. But anyway, um, the last part of this is that Deborah and Robert, mind you, the mother and the father, the mother and the father both said that the children simply ran away and that Monica had a boyfriend that was involved with drugs. So and the possibility. Yeah, crazy. exactly. But how does how does a mother join in right. with telling that story? So the possibility that they ran away is disputed since neither of the children took any money with them or any belongings. But the bottom line is Monica and Michael, they're still missing and there's been no sign of them since their 1989 disappearance. So just to recap some vital statistics, um, Monica Renita Bennett, her date of birth was October 27th, 1973. So at the time of her disappearance, she was 15 years old she was five foot five and weighed 130 pounds. She's an African American female with black hair, brown eyes, and Monica's ears are pierced. And Michael Anthony Bennett's date of birth was May 14th, 1975. And at the time of the disappearance, he was 14 years old. His height was five foot seven, 125 pounds. He's an African American male with black hair, brown eyes, and Michael has a scar on his left knee. And they went missing out of Brunswick, Georgia, Glenn County. And uh, the last day that they were seen was June 21st, 1989. So Sippers, if you or anyone you know may have any information concerning this case, whether you think it's a small bit of information or something big, it's never too late to share the information that you have and help the family find some sort of closure. So you can contact the Glenn County Police Department at 912-267-5700. And of course, on our social media pages for Facebook and Instagram, I will go ahead and post pictures of the children and also um, an age progression photo of both of them as well. Oh, man. Thanks for that one. That's Mm -hmm. sad. I know that was a lot, ladies, but I had to give oh, the backstory wow. on that. I didn't want to just mm-hmm. say, yeah. these kids are missing. Help us find them. I had to mm-hmm. give the backstory. It's just so yeah. hard. For me. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, mm. that case and it's, and you right. know what? He knows exactly what happened. Oh, of course. I believe so, too. And he get to take it to his grave. 
Right. And I think, think I think that. the mother may have already passed away. I'm not sure about the oh, father really? uh-huh. because I didn't find it. I saw articles where the grandmother, the, the, the wife's mother was trying to, you know, keep the story alive, but I mm. couldn't find anything recent with the mother doing any interviews or anything. So, okay. Yeah. So sad. That is it sad. Is. Okay. Well, thank you for that. So if you guys want any more information, just go to our Instagram page and we will have pictures and the link, well, not the links because you can't do links on Instagram, but we'll, we'll give you the information on Instagram. And, you know, if you guys have any information, please, you know, call your local, the local authorities. for that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that, Martia. Um, I guess we've You're come welcome. to the end of our episode. Oh man, we had to end again. Oh, ready? Wow, that <laughs> time goes by fast. I know. Just like I said, I, thought I, we I just think said I'm hello. starting to feel my uh, New York sound. Are you? Music, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, so. You don't sleep good tonight. I'm go- exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys for another great episode of Sip and Unwind. And yes. guys, listen out there. Make sure you like and comment and share our information out there and subscribe yes, please yeah. mm-hmm. follow yeah. us and we're please. here every tuesday with new episodes every tuesday every tuesday all right um until next time i guess you guys keep sipping i will yes. <laughs> all right bye guys bye ladies bye sippers bye